So in this video, I'd like to go over some Amazon KPIs, key performance indicators um, that you can take a look at when you're doing Amazon advertising and you can kind of measure these over time and see if there's any improvement in them. Uh, and that'll give you an idea of, of your performance. Um, the first one, ACOS and ROAS, that's the one that people um, talk about the most. So ACOS stands for uh, Advertising Cost of Sale. And basically that is uh, spend divided by sales. And so for example, if we take um, you know $1,000 in spend, so you've got $1,000 in spend and $5,000 in sales, and you take that 1,000 and you divide it by the 5,000 in sales, uh, you get an ACOS of 20%, 1,000 divided by 5,000 is 0 0.2, which is uh, 20%. Uh, basically, what this measures is the effectiveness of your advertising, how much money you get for every dollar you put in. Um, this was a lot more popular as a measure maybe three to five years ago. Um, nowadays, most people are using ROAS, which is return on ad spend. Um, this is basically uh, measures the exact same thing. It's just sales divided by spend. So in the above example where we've got $5,000 sales, $1,000 spend, uh, your ROAS would be $5,000 divided by $1,000, and that would equal 5. So 5 ROAS, 20% ain't cost in this example here. And basically, ROAS just gives you the same thing. Um, you can uh, They're interchangeable. You can use either or. Um, but ROAS kind of, the reason people are moving towards ROAS is because it gives it in a whole number. It gives it in a nice kind of, put $1 in, you get $5 out in sales. And it's, it's just easier for people to grasp. But this is probably the, the most basic KPI that people will track. Um, it'll give you uh, a very clear understanding of how much you're spending and how many sales you're getting. If the ROAS goes up, um, that means you're spending less and either making the same amount or making more money. Um, if ACOS goes down, same thing. Um, if, if you know you make some changes and you go from a 5 ROAS to a 3.5 ROAS or something like that, um, those changes might be need to be reverted. Um, many, many ways you can use this. Um, important to note, ROAS and ACOS, um, they're not the be-all, end-all of, of advertising. Um, you can have a very high ROAS, very low ACOS, um, and still be leaving money on the table. For example, you're only running ads on your branded search terms. So you've got brand A. Brand A is only bidding on brand A related keywords. Um, their ROAS is 10 plus, but they're not uh, hitting that middle top to, top of funnel. They're really only retargeting people that are familiar with their brand. They have a great ROAS, but they're not getting any new customers. They're not getting any new sales. Um, so that's that's kind of the main the, the first one that that is fairly basic. Um, next one would be click through rate. So click through rate is um, how many people see your ad versus how many people click on it. So it's derived by clicks divided by impressions. So for example, if you've got a thousand clicks and a hundred thousand impressions. Your click-through rate is equal to 1,000 divided by 100,000, which is about 1%. Which on Amazon is a fairly good click-through rate. Um, what what this what this KPI here will give you an idea of is how uh, this is something you can track on keyword basis, on an account basis, on a campaign basis, product basis, whatever you're looking to to accomplish, but. What this gives you is an idea of how relevant your keywords that you're, you're bidding on are. Uh, so for example, in the above example that we gave for the brand, um, you might have a click-through rate of 30 plus because you're only bidding on your brand-based keywords. If you're bidding on very top of funnel, very high volume keywords, your click-through rate might be in the you know 0.15%. Um, and yeah, it, it's a very, very interesting KPI to look at. It's not something that you want to really focus on too much. It's just a secondary KPI to kind of give you an idea. This is what um, 
you know, bidding on this keyword, this is, this is what our CTR is, this is uh, uh, what it is for this bid, this is what it is for this placement. Um, just something to keep in mind, nothing to, to really be too concerned about. Cost per click, um, self-explanatory. Basically, this is how much you actually end up paying per click on Amazon or any other platform that you're, you're running ads on. Um, cost per clicks will range from anywhere from 20, 30, 40 cents to $10 plus, depending on your niche, uh, depending on the product you sell, depending on competition, stuff like that. Uh, cost per click, uh, has a very direct relationship with, um, ROAS, ACOS, um, and that will, uh, kind of, if you can drop cost per click and keep the, the number of clicks the same, keep your, um, conversion rate the same, you'll directly impact ROAS, uh, you'll directly impact ACOS, you'll directly impact your, your sales velocity and you, you, overall your profit. Um, again, fairly, uh, a fairly simple KPI, not, not much you can really do about it. This is where bidding strategy comes in. This is where placement comes in. This is where uh, many different, any different strategies you want to run, any different ad types, they'll have different cost per clicks and you can play around with those. Uh, but this is one of the metrics that all the other metrics are derived from. You have a $5 cost per click and a $25 product. So let's say $5 CPC, your product is $25. Um, in order to get a one ROAS, you would need to have a one in five conversion rate because, so let's say you get five clicks, five times 25, five times five equals 25. And there you go, you've got a one ROAS. Um, that brings me to my next metric, which is conversion rate. Um, conversion rate is basically how, uh, how often your product converts, and that is uh, derived by uh, clicks divided by, sorry, sales divided by clicks. So you've got, let's say for example, you've got one sale, five clicks equals one in five conversion rate or 20% conversion rate, which for Amazon is very good. Um, conversion rate, again, on a keyword level, on a, on an ad group level, or even on, a, on an account level will directly impact uh, ACOS and ROAS. Uh, basically, your goal with conversion rate, the way to improve it is be targeting the correct keywords, um, have good reviews. There's... Uh, there's some stuff you can do with headline. There's some stuff you can do with um, optimized listings with good product images, good videos. Um, but but really, from a purely ads perspective, your conversion rate is going to have the most to do with uh, the keywords you're targeting, uh, your reviews, uh, how competitive the market is. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind because this will, again, it's one of those things that if you can bump up just a little bit, it will have a big impact on your bottom line. Um, tacos and T ROAS. This is one of the more important um, KPIs that I don't see a lot of people talk about that we kind of use at Hawkeye very often. Uh, it, it stands for true advertising cost of sale and true, uh, true return on ad spend. And the idea behind these is that you, you can't, it's, it's taking a very narrow view to only look at revenue generated from advertising. So if, if we take a look at ACOS, basically you log into sell, um, you log into seller central, you go to campaign manager and you'll see the sales directly attributed to advertising. Um, and that will give you your ACOS or your ROAS, uh, with tacos and with T ROAS, um, this is derived by taking your advertising spend divided by total sales. So organic and advertising sales. The goal of this, this metric is to see um, brand growth, is to see uh, sales velocity increase because as I'm sure you guys know, uh, or maybe not, um, getting sales on the keyword on Amazon, no matter how you get that sale, whether it's through advertising or organic, will increase your ranking for that keyword. Um, so for example, if we take a look at somebody who's spending, let's say 6,000 a month, 
in spend, and they're getting two hundred thousand a month in uh, in total sales. In total sales, um, let's let's say two forty for easier easier calculations. And so you take six thousand, you divide it by two hundred forty thousand, and you get your answer of a tacos or total advertising cost of sale uh, is equal to four, so four percent tacos. Um, this would be a very 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 passive advertising strategy. This is kind of what Tacos and TROS gives you. This is what it tells you. Um, your advertising strategy here is way too passive. Um, you, you have more room in your budget. You can probably increase this number here by increasing this because you're really not spending as much on advertising as you could. Um, if we take another example, somebody spending 10,000 on advertising and getting 30,000 in total sales. This gives you a tacos of uh, 33%. In this case, um, the tacos is very high. It's above 30%. Um, they're probably overspending on ads. There's probably wasted ad spend because it's not being reflected in the overall sales. Um, in this case, we would be looking at something like uh, what are they spending on? How many ad types are they running? Um, with with this low of a number in, in monthly sales and this much ad spend, there's, there's something off there. There's something that they could probably be doing differently. Or they're a brand new seller and they're, they're just looking to, to run at break even, to run and, and generate, uh, generate sales velocity. Nothing wrong with that. If it's part of a strategy, completely fine. Uh, but generally, a tacos of, of under 20% is a little passive. Tacos of between 20 and 30% is optimal. And tacos of over 30% is too aggressive. Again, unless this is all done part of a strategy, maybe you're you know a fairly fairly established brand and you're only looking to kind of maintain market presence and just milk as much cash out of it as possible. Uh, even then, you're probably looking to get a tacos of about ten to fifteen percent. Um, maybe you're a brand new brand, like I mentioned here, and then this is acceptable for you um, for for short term. But really, between twenty and thirty percent is what you're looking to do in order to have a healthy mix of growth and profit. Um, T ROAS, basically the same thing as tacos, except the other way around. Um, it would be uh, is equal to total sales divided by advertising spend. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of the uh, another metric, uh, tacos T ROAS that's uh, overlooked, I would say, on Amazon. Um, if you take a look at that, it'll give you an idea of your overall account health, overall. Uh, advertising health compared to your total sales. Um, and yeah, so number of reviews per month is the next metric we're going to get into. Um, this, is a, this is a difficult metric to impact. Um, you have a few options. You can uh, uh, generally number of reviews is a function of how many sales you got, a function of the price of, of your product, um, and a function of the quality and your review strategy. Uh, the better, obviously, the more reviews per month you get, the the faster you're going to grow compared to your competitors. So this is this is kind of like a tertiary tertiary metric I would look at. But after you've exhausted all the other ones, you can take a look at this and maybe optimize for review gathering, review collection. Um, don't want to spend too much time on this because um, we're getting to another interesting one here: uh, customer acquisition cost or CAC. Um, this is one of the metrics that is really only applicable to, to businesses that have a recurring aspect, that have a customer lifetime value aspect. So, for example, if you've got a product that is highly um, recurring, so something like just off the top of my head, uh, I don't know, paper cups, right? Pa like coffee cups, paper coffee cups. Um, 
that that you sell for a hundred dollars. You sell a hundred paper coffee cups for a hundred dollars. For a thousand paper coffee cups for a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars, one thousand coffee cups. Um, and you know that you know these thousand paper cups. Um, when people like them, they're going to need to buy more because they're disposable. A thousand of them will go by in however many coffees this generally business to business uh, customer of yours will purchase per month. So if you know that when somebody buys from you uh, for the first time, there's a X percent chance that they'll come back, you can start to develop an advertising strategy around that. So customer acquisition cost, for example, let's say um, you sell your product for $100 here and it costs you $150 to get a customer. So this customer that you get will buy, let's say one per month. Your CAC is now equal to $150. That's your customer acquisition costs. Um, you start seeing profit from this advertising spend, which by the way, um, if, if you're looking at it from a purely talk, uh, ICOS ROAS perspective, um, this is terrible. You, you spend $150 to get a hundred dollar sale. That looks pretty bad. That's, uh, that's an under, uh, under one ROAS, um, very, very poor over a hundred percent ACOS. But if you look at it from a longer term perspective, this one customer in the first month costs you $150 minus the hundred dollar order. Right? So you are down, in month one, you are down $50, $50 as a loss. In, um, you get another $100, so 50 minus 100. You are now in profit, $50, month two. Month three, another hundred dollars, so fifty dollar profit. That's hundred. You are now hundred and fifty dollars in profit from that cap, from that customer initial customer acquisition cost of one hundred and fifty. Month four, you are now two hundred and fifty dollars in profit from that customer. And this is the power of recurring sales. For that initial 150, you've now established and acquired a customer that will be giving profit month over month over month. And you, you've got them. You acquired a customer. You paid this upfront cost in order to reap the benefits down the line. Probably one of the most important metrics to look at um, in order to, uh, for a business that's running uh, any kind of recurring sales. If you've got, if your subscribe and save is very active, if you're looking for subscribe and save customers, if there are any disposable stuff for your uh, products, if it's makeup, if it's uh, protein, if it's supplements, if it's anything like that, very, very, very important uh, metric to look at. Um, that brings me to a related metric, which is uh, lifetime value. Uh, lifetime value directly plays into your uh, co customer acquisition cost. Um, so if we take a look at this customer and they buy $100 worth of paper cups every month from you. Well, the question now is, you know your CAC, you know your customer acquisition. Uh, how long are they going to stay with you? What's your life? What's the lifetime value of this customer? Um, are they going to be buying $100 uh, worth of paper cups from you for the next six months? Is it going to be the next 30 months, five years, 10 years? Um, that's something that you need to calculate based on how long. Uh, th this is one of those things that are very difficult to calculate uh, into the future. It's just something that you have to take a look at. Okay, what are my metrics telling me? How long do I retain customers for? And then extrapolate that for for uh, for your CAC. So if you, for example, if you know that um, CAC equals 150, LTV equals 1500. Um, lifetime value is generally expressed in dollars. And 
what you get, get it is monthly spend um, times average. Uh, so monthly spend times average uh, And basically churn is when somebody either discontinues their subscribe and save, stops buying from you, stops being a subscription, whatever the, uh, the metric you want to call it is. So in, in this above case, lifetime value uh, compared to CAC. So you've got, in this case, $150, a lifetime value of $1,500, or about 15 months or so uh, before they stop buying, which is a very healthy profit margin. You can see that you spent $150 uh, to acquire $1,500 over time, uh, which is uh, very, very healthy. That's about a 10, 10 ROAS, 10% 10 ACOS. Um, the reason your lifetime value is so important to understand is because if the LTV here is equal to only, let's say, $300, because they, your product is in high quality, they, they, for whatever reason, people stop buying it after a while, maybe they, they have an average of three months, um, well, now your uh, LTV to CAC ratio is uh, is equal to only 0 0.5 or um, a two ROAS, or your LTV to CAC is equal to two, which is generally a good way to lose money on a long-term business. So now. And uh, here's another uh, interesting KPI to look at, and that's average order value. Um, average order value basically measures um, when someone buys from you, how much do they spend on average? Um, if you get, if you have a product that costs ten dollars, um, and on average people buy only one at a time, your average order value is going to be ten. If um, if you have a product that costs $20, but people buy three at a time on average, your average order value is going to be 60. Uh, so average order value is dependent on two things, and that is cost of product and number of units sold at once. Fairly important um, KPI, but, but uh, also fairly easily derived. It's also primary KPI that Amazon just displays to you, no need for derivation or anything like that. Um, yeah, look at it and see. It'll give you some insight into the type of business you have, into whether uh, people are making more bulk orders. Um, yeah. Uh, so the last one I want to talk about today, and probably one I'll do a separate video on, is one that I have very rarely seen anyone talk about when it comes to Amazon CPC, PPC and Amazon in general. And that is the relationship between the cost of product to cost per click. Uh, so why is this important? I'll, I'll give you an example that will demonstrate exactly why this is important. Let's say you're selling a couch for $750. And your cost per click for this product for your main keywords is something like, let's say $1.50, which is about the average keyword cost per click on Amazon. Um, that means that your... Uh, price to CPC ratio is 500. That means you get 500 clicks before you have to get a sale to recoup the cost of your, your product. Now that's not saying it's going to be profitable. So if you get, so if your conversion rate is one in 500 equals one row S. And from this, you can work backwards and kind of decide at this cost per click, what conversion rate do I need in order to get a five row as a three row as or two row as, um, and you can, you can also kind of see what you can expect from pay per click before you even start. So if we, if we use a completely different, let's say a little more extreme example, you've got a toothbrush and the cost of that toothbrush is $10 and your cost per click is 50 cents. Well, now that uh, price to CPC ratio is 20. So you need one in 20 conversion rate for one row S. So if you have 20 clicks and you get one sale, that'll cost you 
and you'll get $10 back from selling. And that is a one row S. Um, whereas here you can do the same in 500 clicks. So you need a one in 500 um, uh, conversion rate in order to break even on cost of product. A uh, very important metric, one I'll do in a separate video on going in depth about how we use this to calculate um, everything from expected ROAS, um, how we use historic cost per click, and how you can use this to, to make your advertising more efficient and to make your um, co uh, PPC decisions uh, more analytical and ultimately how it's going to make you more money. I, uh, I hope this was at least a little educational for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments if there's something that you don't understand or any questions you might have, and I'll see you soon.